Hello students, welcome to this online classroom in nutrition and metabolism. Uh, today, the lesson that we are going to learn is the role of folate in metabolism. Since we have covered a course on basic nutrition, you are familiar with this particular nutrient, folate. Um, the basic function of folate is formation of new cells. And uh, when we talk about formation of new cells and growth, it is very much related to reproductive health. It is a very important nutrient in pregnancy because pregnancy is all about growth and maturation cells. This folate is a B vitamin, it's a water soluble vitamin and it has a nomenclature of B9. So among the various numbers, this, this folate as a nutrient is given a number of B9. And um, it, is, it is available in uh, the natural form from our food sources. These are the food sources. We have the green leafy vegetables, beans, and other sources. And the second category is the supplements, which is the synthetic form of folate. And uh, typically, the supplement form is the acid form. It is folic acid, whereas the natural source, uh, natural uh, you know, folate from the food sources is called as folate. So the rich sources of folate, as I said, are green leafy vegetables and the name folate comes from the term foliage or leafy vegetables. But other sources, as, as I mentioned, beans, soya beans and non-vegetarian foods are also rich sources of folate. Now the last category that I've mentioned there is fortified foods, although this is not a food source, it's not naturally occurring. In populations where the intake of folate is very less, the staple food is often fortified with the, um, the synthetic form of folic acid and that, that category is mentioned here as fortified foods. Let's go into the functions of folate. Now, the functions of folate are varied. The entire systemic function is controlled by folate and that's really wonderful to understand. It has its role in the central nervous system, in the development and maturation of the central nervous system, in various functions of the central nervous system, and therefore it also affects mental and cognitive health. It, it helps in the formation of DNA and RNA production. So yeah, it's, it's the key of the cell. It holds the key of the cell and it has a major role in the genetic material being transformed from one generation to another. And therefore, it is related to pregnancy, the reproductive phase where there is DNA synthesis, where there is transfer of genetic information. Therefore, the reproductive phase is very important to call it as a nutrient. Apart from these functions, it works hand in hand with other nutrients as well. For example, it works closely with B12 for the maturation of RBCs. When we talk about cells, it's not just about the other cells, even the RBCs. The development and maturation are dependent on folate. So folate along with B12 plays a role in maturation of RBCs and maintaining the health of RBCs. The other nutrient is iron. Although you will see an overlap of the sources, all the iron rich sources somehow overlap with folate rich sources. And um, folate plays a role in function or better functioning of iron in our body. The next is homocysteine. Homocysteine is an amino acid and um, the levels of homocysteine in our body are maintained closely uh, with the help of folate along with B12 and B6. So this is a very important metabolic function which folate plays hand in hand with other nutrients and that is going to be the focus of this lecture. So we, we will just summarize the cellular functions. So folate has a role in hematopoiesis. I just told you about RBCs, their production and maturation. The growth and differentiation of all other cells in our body. And um, I told you about the central nervous system functions, the, the, the development of the spinal cord. And along with that, mood swings and mental health also are related to normal folate levels because Folate plays a role in production of serotonin and non-adrenaline. These help in the production of the neurotransmitters and there are certain neurotransmitters which make us feel good 
and um, along with other functions of uh, memory and cognitive functions of the central nervous system. So all, all these are some of the central nervous system functions of college. The metabolic functions, if you look at it, start from here. It's methylation, which is the key function, and that plays a role in homocysteine, the maintenance of normal levels of homocysteine. And what is written here is homocysteine reduction. This is a specific function in biochemistry where reduction in, in normal in normal understanding, reduction is something lesser. But in biochemistry, in chemistry, when you see reduction, it is gaining of electrons. When, a, when, when an element gains electrons, it gets reduced. And this reduction of homocysteine plays a major role in folate metabolism. It's, it's a major step in folate metabolism. Uh, or it's a major role in metabolism which is governed by folate and um, folate also has a major role to play in DNA synthesis. Apart from all these functions, the portion that is uh, highlighted in blue is, is one of the major functions of folate where it plays um, a key role in reproductive reproductive. So as, as we saw, it plays a role in growth and maintenance of cells. You will see pregnancy is all about growth. So it plays a role in the growth of uterus, the development of fetus, placenta, the breast tissue and also the higher blood volume because it's about RBCs and maintaining the blood volume. This is about the maternal tissue growth. When we look at children, uh, the, it, the, the development of neural tube is dependent on this nutrient folate. So deficiency of folate leads to neural tube defects and other birth defects that is in, uh, heart defects, orophagic cleft and all these birth defects can be prevented by proper intake of this particular micronutrient which is folate. So uh, getting into the metabolism of folate. If you look at folate, folate it, it is in an inactive form. So as such, folate is not active. It undergoes a series of steps in order to become active. First, it goes to uh, it, it gets in, uh, reduced by dihydrofolate reductase, where it gets converted to tetrahydrofolate. Now, the key reaction that we are going to focus is the uh, the folate, which is the inactive form, is converted into the active form, which is methyl tetrahydrofolate. So this reaction is actually the methylation reaction. So folate becomes active when it gets methylated. And when it is methylated, it easily penetrates into the cells and it brings about various functions of the cells. So all the, all the functions that we saw, whether it is the brain cell, whether it is the RBC or the cells in the fetus or the embryonic cell, wherever the, the methylated form of folate begins entry into the cell and performs its functions beautifully. So we are going to understand the role of folate in metabolism and before going into that, let us, let us learn an interesting phrase which will help us to understand this metabolism better. Mm, okay, be before going into that phrase, I wanted to talk about this methylation. So for us to understand what is methylation, we need to understand what is a methyl group. So I put this at the corner of this slide. Methyl group is a C with three hydrogen attached to it or it is CH3. This is the methyl group which can be attached to any side chain which is represented as R. So this is methyl group CH3. Addition of this methyl group to any basic element is called the process of methylation. And this we saw the example in folate where the inactive folate is converted into the active form which is methylation. So this is nothing but the addition of a CH3 group to the folate and that makes it active. In this methylation, although it takes place in different parts of our body, the DNA methylation is of prime importance since we are talking about health of the cells, growth of the cells, maturation of the cells and how this is going to impact health. So DNA methylation is a key reaction for life. It is, a, I repeat, it's a key reaction for life because if you look at the terms, what is this DNA methylation? It is an epigenetic mechanism. What is this term epi? Genetic mechanism, yeah, we all understand. It's it's transferring the DNA, it's transferring the genetic mechanism from uh, genetic ingredients from one generation to, to the other. 
but this is the highest form of genetic mechanism. That is why it is called as epigenetic and this is the highest form of genetic mechanism is methylation and it is DNA methylation. Because it is happening in the DNA, which is the core of the cell, it is an epigenetic mechanism. So what, what is this epigenetic mechanism? This is nothing but the mitotic and meiotic changes. I think you are very familiar, we have done it in our school, mitosis and meiosis is div cell division, differentiation and growth, growth and multiplication of cells. So during this process, if there is a metabolic change, it can either turn on some genes or it can turn off some genes. So this turning off and on of genes can impact health and disease. And that is why methylation is an important reaction. It's a, it's a biochemical reaction which is which has a great significance in public health because methylation reactions have been connected to the non-communicable di diseases in the present day's world, mainly in the developing nations where we are not prepared for this huge burden of non-communicable diseases. So this is the phrase that I want to uh, introduce to you. This is just to make you all remember certain keywords. And for that, let us understand, let us learn this phrase. He and she glided and met the Puritan. I repeat, he and she glided and met the Puritan. This is, this is a simple way to remember the names of the amino acids because in this phrase, there are certain amino acids which are hidden. Some of you must have found out by now. In the next slide, I've, I've highlighted certain amino acids. I've changed the spellings earlier for, for you all to get familiar with these amino acids. He, that is H and I, stands for histidine. SE stands for serine. GLI, the glided. The GLY in glided stands for glycine. And MET stands for methionine. DHE, I, I had written the purine. And that stands for di, which is thymidylate and purine. So these are the six different amino acids which we are going to understand today, where folate has a role to play in the metabolism of these amino acids. So these are the six different amino acids which I have uh, spelt it out here. And all these are amino acids. Now you see the link between the macronutrients and the micronutrients. So all these are amino acids. The sources are proteins from the diet that we take. So the dietary proteins which we take, when, when they have to be metabolized, they are dependent on the micronutrients. Or to put it simply, I have put the green leafy vegetables just to highlight the importance of this particular food in our diet. How these have a control? You, you can be a protein, um, uh, you, you can be dependent on your protein, more on your non-vegetarian sources, but still you can never forget your uh, uh, basic vitamins which is folate because for better utilization or metabolism of these proteins and these amino acids, you require the key ingredient which is folate which is for the green leafy vegetables. So the first amino acid of interest is histidine. But if you look at the reactions, histidine gets converted to uromonic acid. And the process which is involved is a removal of an amino group which we call it as deamination. As you all are aware, deamination is a process which is um, involved in the breakdown of complex proteins. Now in this series of reactions, histidine, after for, for forming uromonic acid, gets converted to form aminobutamate, which is otherwise called as figlu. So histidine gets converted to figlu during a process of, uh, by going through a process of deamination. And figlu, very important, is dependent on folate to get converted to glutamate. So in this process of degradation of hist histidine, you have folate coming in to act on figlu, which is form aminobutamate, to convert it into glutamate. And as you are aware, glutamate is a key um, intermediate in the degradation of proteins, which helps in various transamination reactions. So first you have deamination, which is removal of amino group. Then you have transamination, which is transfer of amino groups. And for the next steps to proceed, you need a folate. You need folate molecules to bring about this conversion of form amino glutamate to glutamate. And um, these are key reactions in the metabolism of histidine, the breakdown of histidine. Now, since folate is a, is, is a facilitator for this, for this reaction, what will happen in the absence of folate or 
to simply understand in folate deficiency, this figure, this is form a minor glutamate, form aminoglutamate cannot be converted to glutamate and the concentration of this keeps increasing, which is not good for health. So what are the consequences? Glutamate is a neurotransmitter, so for your central nervous system to be active, to get connected with the rest of your system, you need glutamate. In the absence of uh, folate, you don't have enough glutamate to keep your connections on, your neurotransmitters do not function. This in turn affects learning, memorizing and various other cognitive functions. It can lead to serious conditions such as schizophrenia and other cognitive disorders. And all these are somehow related to altered metabolism of our basic nutrients, which is carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So all these metabolism are affected because of the simple absence of folate or the deficiency of folate. So that is about the histidine cycle. But let's go into serine and glycine cycle. These are the other two amino acids. Now um, I don't know whether you can you can see the amino acids. They are written faintly here. This is the entire cycle, but I'm not going to take you into that. I'm going to concentrate on serine and glycine, which is written here. These are the two amino acids of interest whose metabolism are linked to folate. This is the next cycle that you have to focus on. So serine and glycine are two important amino acids. There are some tissues in our body which can directly synthesize serine. And there are some tissues in our body which synthesize serine from glycine. So if you have glycine, glycine gets converted to serine and serine further um, uh, facilitates various other reactions. Now what are these reactions? If you look at the intermediates of these reactions, it is tetrahydrofolate, N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate, methyl tetrahydrofolate. So all these are folate, folate, folate layer. This is the folate metabolic cycle. So serine and glycine are very important feeders for the folate cycle to go on. Alright, so what is this role of serine? What is exactly serine doing? Again, I'll take your attention to this methyl group which is on this side of the screen. The methyl group is what is the key, key reaction which is triggering off this folate cycle. So serine is a one carbon provider. What is this one carbon? It is the methyl group which is in other words termed as one carbon because if you look at the structure it is a one carbon structure as we've understood in our earlier lectures in basic nutrition i've always said it's just this combination of cho put into various permutation combination that gives a huge understanding of various nutrients that we learn about now it is this one carbon which is fed by serine into the folate cycle so what folate is actually doing is it is carrying this one carbon, it is carrying this methyl group into the subsequent reactions. Alright, so for, for serine, so if you, if you look at this, serine gets, it's, it's converting, it's giving this one carbon and the methyl group gets circulated. So it is, it is the recycling of this methyl group. Okay, so serine is providing in the methyl group. And what happens, imagine there is a break in this cycle, you will not have the serine and glycine cycle continued in the absence of folate. Although we understand serine is the feeder of one carbon to the folate cycle, folate is important for the metabolism of serine and glycine. So in the absence of folate, the serine and glycine cycle will not happen and that leads to a whole lot of changes in our system. It once again, it's, it has very similar metabolic functions, uh, beta molecule derangements, it affects the brain and the central nervous system, it, it, it results in impaired functioning of DNA and RNA, it affects fat and fatty acid metabolism which has a very significant um, um, uh, consequence in the cardiovascular um, um, diseases and non-communicable diseases. It plays a role in muscle formation, muscles are weakly formed in the absence of folate because it is involved in amino acid uh, metabolism. So even if you're taking proteins and amino acids, if you do not have sufficient folate, you will not have proper muscle building which goes on in your body. It is essential for the synthesis of tryptophan and this is an essential ingredient in our body because in the absence of these neurotransmitters, you will, you will uh, end up getting depressed, there is insomnia, insomnia, anxiety, all of these are central nervous system changes which are associated with folate deficiency linked with serine and glycine cycle. And there is also decreased performance of your immune system so the person is susceptible to various kinds of 
um, uh, in, uh, not just the infections, even other resistance to non-communicable diseases goes less because of a weakened immune system. So, so far we've seen history, we've seen serine and glycine. Now we go on to the next amino acid, which is nerve This is an other interesting amino acid because as the name suggests, it is methionine. If you remember the phrase, I had written uh, an abbreviation as met. So this is a very interesting point. It's a meeting point. Met, methionine cycle is a meeting point of two essential nutrients, which is folate and B12. So far, we've seen folate, folate, folate in all the amino acids. But in this particular um, uh, uh, methionine cycle, you will see the role of folate and um, B12 work in both working hand in hand to bring about this one carbon metabolism. I would like to draw your attention to methionine which is here. And um, so what happens is, uh, we, we saw the serine and the glycine uh, amino acids and we saw the tetrahydrofolate cycle which is going on. What, what, what will happen in the absence of serine and glycine? Uh, if serine and glycine is not there, you know, we will not have homocysteine which is being formed, which, which is there in the previous uh, uh, slide also. In the absence of serine and glycine, you will have fo folate. When folate is not there, homocysteine uh, will not be converted to methionine. And therefore, the levels of homocysteine keeps increasing in our system. So you need to have your serine and glycine cycle going on in order to go up to here for tetrahydrofolate to be resynthesized because the one carbon which was donated by serine is uh, given to homocysteine. It, it is methyl tetrahydrofolate, the methyl group which was derived from serine is given to homocysteine and homocysteine in the process gets converted to methane. So the one carbon which was given by serine and serine or glycine it's transferred only to be given to homocysteine, which gives it away to methionine. So homocysteine formation is very important because this is the methyl donor for methionine. Now if you look at this, still here it was folate, folate, folate. Now when you go to the next step, what you see here is so it's the same. Um, I've, I've just focused, I've enlarged this cycle. So homocysteine requires a B12 here. So we see folate. All this while you have folate and now you require B12. B12 is, is, an, is an amino acid which is, uh, sorry, it's, it's a, a vitamin which is essential along with folate for the conversion of homocysteine to methionine. When B12 is not there or folate is not there, this conversion of homocysteine to methionine doesn't take place. But there is one more interesting thing between homocysteine and methionine. So homocysteine, in the absence of folate, you have homocysteine levels which are increasing. And we all know that homocysteine has been understood as an indicator for cardiovascular diseases. When homocysteine levels go high, it is not good for health. It's an indicator for cardiovascular diseases. So homocysteine levels go up. And home because uh, it cannot be converted in the absence of folate, Homocysteine cannot be converted. Uh, uh, homocysteine cannot be converted to methionine because folate is not giving the one carbon. And in the absence of B12, which is our Asian population, which is deficient in B12, you you have folate, but in pregnancy, this this is a major issue. In pregnancy, you give a lot of folate where where. Um, uh, 40 milligrams is required and you give 400 milligrams, that's a major concern. There is more of folate which is dumped into the system. So folate is triggering off an increase in homocysteine cycle, but our population is deficient in B12. The homocysteine cannot be converted into methionine and that is a risk for high levels of homocysteine which further increases the risk of cardiovascular. This is a key reaction in non-communicable diseases. And it rocked the world about 10 to, uh, 10 to 12 years back. This, this was a huge finding that this was identified as a risk factor. And the role of B12 and folate and cardiovascular diseases was well understood uh, by, by understanding the like, metabolism of these amino acids. So homocysteine needs to be converted to methionine. And for this, we understood that folate and B12 are required. But what is the difference between homocysteine and methionine? Both are amino acids. If you look at this slide, what I have written is, Methionine is obtained from dietary proteins. So all amino acids, are, most of the amino acids are 
uh, derived from proteins, but then there are some which which uh, cannot be synthesized. There, there, these some can be synthesized by our body, some cannot be synthesized by our body. So methionine is derived from dietary proteins, but homocysteine is synthesized within the system. It's not dependent on dietary proteins. So uh, for homocysteine to be metabolized, you have these micronutrients which have to be supplied in adequate amounts for the normal metabolism of this particular amino acid which is not dependent on dietary sources. So you have methanin. You have methanin which is formed by the one carbon that is donated from the serine which, which helps in conversion of homocysteine along with the B12 and we have methanin which is formed. Now before going into uh, the details of this, I would like to talk about something called as a, a term called as folate trap. So what is this folate trap? In our public health system, when women, women go and register their pregnancy, they are given a lot of folate. And um, even, even after 28 days, when, when folate requirement is very high, a lot of folate is being given throughout pregnancy. So the problem is the folate is given in excess amounts but it is not being able to be metabolized. It, it, does, it is not able to get converted into tetrahydrate. It is, it is not recycled. So this is called as folate trap. The folate gets trapped so that it cannot go into further uh, steps in order to get metabolized. And normal metabolism is normal for It's good for health. Altered metabolism reflects ill health. And here there is a block and this term is understood as, uh, this, this block is called as folate trap. Where you take a lot of folate during pregnancy, the, the, the small window period of nine months where there is excess intake of folate, they say it gives the blueprint for it lays the blueprint for non-communicable diseases later on in life. Alright, now we are in methionine cycle. In methionine, you will find there, there are various intermediates which are which are being produced. That is N uh, adenosyl methionine. And all this methionine being converted, methionine is further going to give rise to homocysteine. So if methionine is not going to metabolize, uh, this, this recycling of this one carbon is going to be affected. Homocysteine formation is going to be affected. And this conversion of methionine is uh, dependent on ATP and B12. So this uh, ATP, as you, as you know, is high energy is required and you require B12. So this particular uh, cycle, which is a methionine cycle, is very important because the requirement of both B12 and folate are very well emphasized. Now what will happen in the absence of folate? We are still not talking about B12 deficiency, that's going to be another lecture, but we are still in folate deficiency. Folate deficiency can alter, so if there is a block here, this entire pathway gets altered. It is not good for homocysteine, it's not good for methionine, although one might argue there is enough dietary proteins which is going to keep this cycle on. But homocysteine, for, for the entire cycle to be continued, if folate is not there, there is going to be a break and that's not good for health. So in a low methionine, low levels of methionine, it impairs the liver function and this is basically because of fat. The, I, I said, in, in one line I just said, oh, it, it alters carbohydrates, proteins and fat metabolism. Yes, when fat metabolism is altered, it affects the liver functions because um, there is fatty infiltration in the liver and as I have always um, mentioned, liver is like a father figure of metabolism. It controls all metabolism, carbohydrates, proteins, fats. If function of liver is affected, the metabolism goes haywire. Very important, low methionine levels affects liver function because of fat metabolism. Another key function, this is very important because when we think of non-communicable diseases, we often concentrate on cardiovascular diseases, diabetes. There are, there are another group of diseases which we often um, uh, forget, where especially when it is related to metabolism. We keep that. We talk about only uh, carbohydrates, diabetes, and uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases. But glutathione function is affected, which is very, very essential because this is an inherent um, metabolism, metabolic function of detoxification in our system. Anything that is not good for our system, this particular metabolic function, the glutathione metabolic function, removes any, any whether it is toxic metals, whether it is anything which is foreign to our system to be metabolized, everything is taken care of by this glutathione peroxidase system. And when that goes um, haywire, 
then the body is susceptible for being attacked and to be attacked by various other kind of diseases. So in simple terms, to understand the antioxidant function of our system goes down, and that's why we said the that there is impaired immune function. It's not just for communicable diseases. Here the focus is majorly on non-communicable diseases, micronutrients and non-communicable diseases, folic deficiency and non-communicable diseases, where antioxidant function is of key importance, and our body is not able to keep its immune function intact because of the glutathione peroxidase function being affected because of a simple folate deficiency. There is decreased creatine production because methionine is affected and methionine metabolism and creatine is very essential for various muscular functions. Um, the strength of the muscle and the energy supply for the muscle is, is all uh, dependent on creatine that is affected. Uh, it affects collagen, skin, nails, connective tissue, so everything related to uh, proteins. More, any tissue related with proteins, you will have all these uh, functions being impaired. So this this is um, uh, this amino acid methionine. Uh, again, I would like to sum it up by saying it's it's the bringing in together of folate and B12. How both these are into both these um, vitamins are essential for normal metabolism of this amino acid methionine. The next is the thymidine cycle. Thymidine is, is another key uh, amino acid and uh, along with other functions, this, this has a very interesting function where uh, it brings the role of folate um, in the um, synthesis of uh, the DNA. Now folate is not directly related to synthesis of pyrimidine, which is which is our nucleic acid basis, which is in the DNA. It indirectly plays a role by being involved in the de novo synthesis of thymidinate. What is de novo? You start from the beginning, a fresh synthesis of thymidinate. So that is the role of folate. The green leafy vegetable is involved in de novo synthesis of thymidinate. Now look at this cycle. So this is again the same cycle which I have written, but I have highlighted certain things in different forms. So here we have methylene tetrahydrofolate, which gets converted to dihydrofolate. Okay, and this gets converted to tetrahydro. Di is 2, tetra is 4. So what, what exactly is happening in this? If you look at the structure of methylene tetrahydrofolate, you have the CH2, which is formaldehyde. You know? So in this, in this uh, major step, you have the formaldehyde being taken care of, um, taken by DOMP, which is deoxyuridine monophosphate. So the role of uridine, uh, the deoxyuridine or DOMP is like a shuttle system. It's as simple as that. So what dump is going to do is dump is going to take this formaldehyde and it is actually transferring it. It, it is converting it into BTMP, which is deoxythymidine monophosphate. So the deoxyuridine is converted into deoxythymidine um, uh, by a series of reactions which is being catalyzed by thymidylate synthase. This, this reaction is a very essential reaction, a key reaction because thymidylate synthase converts this DUMP or it helps this shuttle system there is a formaldehyde uh, uh, is, is getting uh, transferred with the help of uh, the dump carries this formaldehyde and uh, gives it to, uh, co converts it into uh, DTMP or it carries the formaldehyde and helps in the synthesis of DNA, which I have written in one corner of the slide. So the key step is this DNA synthesis. But for this, we have all these cycles, all the folate cycle involved. And this particular step of methylene tetrahydrofolate giving away the formaldehyde with the help of thymidylate synthase, this gets to the one carbon group. We are, we are talking about formaldehyde, which is CH2. It gets, so what, what is the one carbon, the methyl group, which is CH3. The CH2, in this simple reaction catalyzed by thymidylate synthase, gets converted into CH3 and it, it, it is the key one carbon donator for DNA synthesis. And this is the thymidine cycle. This is the thymidine cycle. So now, what happens when this thymidine cycle, so this is this is the key reaction for my DNA synthesis. What will happen when DNA synthesis is affected? It, it leads to a whole lot of derangements. Uh, so uh, what, what is interesting in this is, 
But I, I said when we are talking about metabolism, it's always convenient to look at carbohydrates and fat metabolism, and we talk about diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. But this is something very interesting. This is called. Uh, mm, this this is um, a key key step in the treatment of cancer. So when we're talking about cancer, this particular step talks about how simple nutrient cycle plays a role in the in, in triggering of cancer. So here we are looking on, on one side we look at DNA synthesis and time delayed synthase when it, it is the rate limiting step. So this where, what, what do you understand by a rate limiting step? So when we are looking at folate inhibitors, what, what are folate inhibitors? Um, any any factor, any anti-nutrient or anything, it, it can be a carcinogen, it can be an anti-nutrient, it can be anything that interferes with folate functions is called a folate inhibitor. Folate inhibitor, um, what, what exactly it does is in the when folate is not there or, or anything which interferes with the functions of folate or a simple folate deficiency can react to certain it can lead to certain adverse reactions where in, instead of normal DNA synthesis um, the absence of folate or the essential nutrients can trigger off growth and development of cells in an abnormal manner so um, uh, certain uh, non-essential ingredients anti-nutrients where it comes and when this cycle goes on the cell starts growing and multiplying but these are not the favorable cells of our body. When folate is there, when all the rest of the intermediates in the cycle are normal ingredients, it is normal metabolism. What is an altered metabolism in the absence of folate or in the presence of folate inhibitors, this cycle is interfered and or it may not be an interference of the cycle. The way the cell starts growing and multiplying is after a change in the DNA. When there is a change in the DNA, when, when the genetic material is altered and there is abnormal growth of cells, then the cells, cells keep growing and multiplying, but this is not normal growth. Now, what did I mean by the rate limiting step? Cancer therapies target this particular reaction of time delayed synthase where it interferes with this particular. They stop all, all the cancer therapies, try and target this reaction where this DUMP doesn't get converted to DTMP and the DNA synthesis, the abnormal DNA synthesis and the growth and development of the cells are curtailed by this intervention or the therapies. Are. So this is this is another uh, scientific advancement that people understood when you target this particular reaction, you can arrest the growth of cancer cells and they are trying to uh, study various nutrients that can interfere with this particular conversion in abnormal metabolism, not in normal metabolism. Normal metabolism you take good amount of folate, the you know, metabolic cycle continues without any change. So time, what are the consequences of um, uh, folate deficiency? Time delay is essential for uh, replication of cells and tissues. Folate antagonist inhibits this particular enzyme which I showed you, uh, showed you and therefore folate is linked to cancer. Deficiency or in simple terms, deficiency of folate can lead to cancer or any anti-nutrient which, which uh, fights against folate utilization in our body can lead to cancer or any folate inhibitor can lead to cancer. So essential uh, normal levels of folate or adequate intake of folate is essential for the prevention of cancer. And uh, that is a rate limiting step which we shouldn't forget. And tetrahydrofolate can be regenerated from thymidylate synthase. Uh, uh, I wanted to go back to this. So you can you can see uh, the dihydro the dihydrofolate gets converted into tetrahydrofolate and this this keeps on continuing. Uh, so in order to break the cycle, you need uh, this array, this uh, step to be particularly intervened, and therefore uh, because otherwise this this process keeps on continuing, and it's quite simple, and therefore abnormal DNA synthesis cannot be uh, stopped unless and until this particular reaction is stopped. These, these are all, um, uh, like, uh, to put it in simple words, you require an other shuttle system, your DUMP and DTMP. And if you stop that shuttle system, abnormal DNA synthesis is arrested. But here, there is no scope for arresting anything because once this is there, automatically it gets converted. 
there is no scope for you to intervene anywhere in order to stop this abnormal photosynthesis and therefore that has been identified because this will lead to this, this will lead to this and this cycle keeps on continuing. But the scope here is there is an other additional shuttle which comes here. When you work on this, this abnormal conversion of DNA can be observed. Okay, and you, you can arrest the defect of DNA synthesis and you can uh, so the cancer trial drug inhibits the that particular reaction which I have shown. So this is the thymidine cycle. We now go to the purine cycle. So this is the last amino acid, and uh, this is another interesting amino acid because this actually is um, giving us an inside look into the DNA, the purines and the pyrimidines. The purine is a uh, is a base, is a nucleic acid base and if there are two particular reactions where, where uh, folate plays a role. It is the second carbon here and the eighth carbon here. So folate plays a role in uh, providing these, uh, these two carbons in the purine cycle. So uh, these, these are all the same cycles. It's, uh, since I have taken it from a different uh, site, it, it shows uh, different shapes. But it's exactly the same cycle which I have showed. But if you look at the we, we saw step by step, we went towards the end. And what we see here is the purine biosynthesis cycle. It is written as AMP and GMP, the, adeno, the, the adenine monophosphate and the guanine monophosphates, the bases, the nucleic acid bases. So these, um, these cannot be synthesized if yeah, the folate cycle is stopped because the cycle starts from here. Your folate, the one carbon um, is being fed from serine and glycine. It starts from here. It goes into the methylate, uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate, the thymidylate cycle, um, uh, and uh, all, all what we have seen. And finally, it comes into this purine biosynthesis. In the absence of folate, all other steps cannot take place effectively, and therefore it interferes with the normal purine biosynthesis, the normal DNA synthesis, you know, human being. What are the consequences of this? So, folate deficiency leads to impaired function, formation of purine. So, the that's, that's a nucleic acid base, a key ingredient for the DNA synthesis. If purine synthesis is not proper, then the DNA synthesis is abnormal. And the only reason is because of folate deficiency. Along with that, it leads to impairment. In uh, it, it, uh, this is this is the most important outcome of that. There is impairment in production of DNA, and DNA uh, defects affect each and every part of our body. So now, now we think of cardiovascular diseases, we think of diabetes, we think of cancer. No, it's it's not that simple. It's these are the micronutrients. When we say micronutrients, they are required in very small quantities and they are available um, from sources which cost the least. And um, yeah, But the functions that they have are so systemic, which means that every part of our body is affected by this key ingredient, by this simple micronutrient or water-soluble B nutrient, where it plays a role in skin. So you will have changes. If, if the DNA is not uh, properly uh, constructed, you will have problems with skin, bones, muscles, you will have central nervous system changes, you have changes in the heart, the muscle, the breast and ovarian cancers are a result of folate deficiency or impairment, impaired metabolism of all these amino acids and also affect the, it also affects the immune system. So immune system is not just for the um, uh, infectious conditions. Here, it's, it's the entire antioxidant system, the glutathione peroxidase, it's both for communicable and non-communicable diseases and therefore micronutrients and very essential. So this is again the summary slide that I wanted to say folate has as a role in, in all, all various functions, especially for growth, normal growth and metabolism, which are happening in cells. And we tried and understood the role of folate through these six amino acid cycles. So I said this is a link between micronutrients and macronutrients. Without micronutrients, your macronutrient metabolic cycles do not mean any, do not mean anything. And um, previously we thought about 
uh, food not being available and carbo um, macronutrient deficiencies. But micronutrient deficiencies, which is the hidden number, is seriously going to impact populations, especially the populations, um, the, the low and middle income countries, where it's rampant. Uh, there, there needs to be a huge investment in the correction and prevention of these micronutrient deficiencies.